more people are aware of, of the issues around trust than they were maybe two years ago. Hello, mate. Hello from New York. Hello from London. Uh, well, we've got some quite challenging news to report uh, on this episode because we're talking about the results that we've got for our latest global media transparency report, yeah. uh, which is something that we do in a cycle every two years. So this is this is wave two, um, where we ask uh, representatives across the industry. I think we had 230 something respondents this time, mostly made up of major advertisers uh, in Europe and the US. Yeah. Uh, and also all the agency groups respond and a whole bunch of other kind of independents and, and other people with points of view. Um, but transparency is obviously a hot topic for the industry. But the results that we've got are really quite alarming and very they were very surprising uh, to us, right? We've got some yeah. bad news. Well, yes, good, bad and somewhat optimistic news as well. Uh, I mean, the bad news is that when we asked our respondents how they felt levels of trust were between client and agency, only 9% thought that they were high or good or above average. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of terrifying. When we did the survey two years ago, that figure was nearly 15 percent. So yeah. we, we've seen a regression in uh, the amount of, of respondents that actually feel that there is a healthy, trusting relationship between client and agency. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty bad. But what's also pretty bad is that 40 percent of them feel that it is particularly low. And, and yeah. again, we've seen that kind of regress from from 30 percent. So so within the marketplace, albeit within kind of our our respondents, um, you know, they genuinely believe that the sentiment of trust is actually going south rather than improving going north. Yeah. And that, and that was really against what we expected. I mean, we're very comfortable yeah. with the, the kind of integrity of the of the of the data. Um, I think it's the largest response that we've had, having done kind of eight of these now. Yeah. Um, and it's very representative, we think, of, of kind of industry sentiment. But to drop in two years, and if you remember, when we when we actually issued the report in the last wave, I think it was like April, I think, of 2016. Yeah. So this was about two months before the ANA's media transparency report published in the US. Mm. Uh, so it wasn't even like the first wave was a reaction to that. That was pr a pr pretty good, uh, you know, benchmark or baseline, yeah. um, which was then highlighted in the ANA report. And in fact, our wave one research was, I think, the only external research that was quoted within the ANA yeah. uh, report uh, on page thirteen. If you might remember, David, the ANA report. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. But in, in terms of a sense of optimism, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we have reached a bottom uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, yeah. the topic around around so. uh, around trust. Uh, one of the questions that we asked was whether the respondents felt that there was a sense of optimism and belief that the trust levels were going to improve. Uh, yeah. And of the respondents, 40 percent believe that it, it is going to improve. And that is in comparison to kind of a low 30 percent figure that we had in wave two. So so maybe, as you said, what maybe we're feeling the the consequences of of trust transparency and all of the kind of the discussions that have gone in the market since the first wave was published. Yeah. Um, but we, I, I hope that we've turned a corner and that when we do wave three in two years time that we'll see, we'll see really positive uh, kind of figures coming through. Well, I think so because you know, there was lots of, I mean, we, we were, we would at, at that time, I mean, we could probably link back to some episodes uh, at the time where we were talking about, uh, you know, thinking that that was a low for agencies yeah. two years ago. You know, it was under under huge scrutiny um, and spotlight and, and accusation, really. Um, you know, from some of the findings. Yeah. But and we thought, well, you know, agencies will get to task now, right? They're going to have to do some work to repair maybe damaged trust. Mm. However, that was caused. You know, that was that seemed to be the thing. So, um, but it, you know, I think our our observation. I don't know how much agencies have really kind of grabbed the nettle with that. I mean, mm -hmm. word transparency has become uh, obviously much more common. And, yeah. you know, I think I think you've said uh, previously that 
you know, it's now when we're talking about pitches or kind of contract negotiations, it's it's a condition of entry. You know, it's yeah. called table stakes now um, to have some sense of transparency uh, around it. But trust is not repairing. So perhaps there's a lag between yeah. more tr more transparent practice and operations. Yeah. And hopefully, as you say, we'll see, this is a flaw for trust that can be repaired over time. But I'd have hoped that agencies would have moved quicker. Yeah actually to have dealt with it and, and we shouldn't be seeing this fall in, in sentiment right now. Yeah. But I, I I genuinely think that this is a this is a lag. I still think that the most of the trust issues um, are grounded in uh, you know a, a relationship that is fundamentally transactional between yeah. client and, and an agency. And I think certainly from the 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 the, the work that we've been doing with businesses that are looking to transform their relationships and those that are, uh, are looking to, to pitch their, their business with, with media agencies, it, the focus is no longer on the transaction and the execution. It's, it's more about strategic thought leadership, uh, making smart and more considered decisions that are going to drive a business outcome. And I think yeah. once, once agencies are uh, embedded within that relationship, then and they're illustrating the value that they can add as a true partner. Uh, as a partner yeah. that is invested in driving a business outcome, then the, the tra trust naturally happens there. And so I'm hoping that in two years' time, when we do this this survey again, uh, you know, a lot of advertisers will have recalibrated the relationships that they've got with their agencies, and that trust will be beginning to grow and come through. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you'd, you'd take a very patient perspective. I think I'm, I would be much more uh, impatient with that. Uh, you know, it takes a long time to rebuild yeah. trust. I mean, if this is really is an indicator of the trust between advertisers and their media agencies, that's going to take a long time to repair. Yeah. Um, you know, it's re totally repairable. Um, I mean, one of the quotes, this is from a, from a major advertiser, uh, a big global advertiser, um, who'd said, and I'll just read the quote, because he said, trust has been breached in a profound way between media uh, ad, uh, between advertisers and their media agencies, the concept of an agency as a true agent is extinct mm. for all practical purposes. Now, that's a pretty extreme view, perhaps. Yeah. But if that's in any way representative, that that's going to take a long time to kind of yeah. get over that. Um, I mean, while I've been in New York this week, I've been I've, I've met with some agency leadership, uh, and we've been talking about some of these kind of issues that you know the struggle with uh, you know with kind of trust issues and mm. and really the role that media agency is going to play and a lot of them uh a lot of these conversations come back to some of the stuff that we've been talking a lot about which is uh, clarifying lines of business that's what i mm. think it comes down to you know you can rebuild trust over time it will take a long long time just through you know doing good work and being a good partner which is really what agencies do on a daily basis yeah. nothing has really changed then uh, there but the the it's the commercial model and the lack of transparency sometimes on that, uh, which I think causes questions amongst the advertiser. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I would that's why I would be a lot more impatient. And my you know my what I'd like to see uh, is more of a quick fix and some strong action, which yeah. is clarifying those lines of business. Yeah. So but, we put all the transactional businesses together that can earn a commission, all the buying stuff, and that can yeah. operate under different terms. But all the value add, the consultancy stuff, has got to be separated out. I just, I really believe that now more than ever, having seen these results. Yeah, I think you're right. And I mean, my sense of optimism comes also from, uh, you know, an understanding and an acknowledgement on the agency side that, uh, you know, the fundamental principle on trust is transparency. Now, when we asked the same question uh, two years ago, uh, what is the what is the key theme that runs through the issues around trust? Less than forty percent of the agency community talked or mentioned transparency. Surprisingly enough, yeah. when I asked that question this time, it's nearly eighty percent. So yeah. there's obviously been an acknowledgement internally that that you know uh, transparency is a key driver in the issues around trust. Yeah. And if the agency community are going to move forward, and they want to move forward because we know that they do, then having an acknowledgement that that's where the core symptom lies, I think will help them find a solution. Yeah, I completely agree. That That's a really good indicator, I think, that the agency community is embracing transparency as a key ingredient to trust. Yeah. That's the key thing. So, uh, uh, so I mean, slightly... Well, it's sad, uh, sad state of affairs. But I think you know, with a with a 
optimistic uh, outcome. Absolutely. Quickly. Yeah. Right. Before we do uh, Good Week, Bad Week, just uh, I should have referenced, we've been talking about the transparency report for 2018. We've just gone into field with uh, the next uh, 70s report survey, uh, which is focused on talent, and the output of that will be the Glo Global Media Talent Survey. Um, you can click in the link down below. Um, please get involved. Tell us your point of view on the quality of talent, both now and on based on your future needs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, mate. Good week for good week again for Amazon. I know that they oh, seem to have appeared on uh, good weeks uh, quite frequently recently, but this yeah. time it's because they have made it to third in the ranking of US ad platforms in terms yeah. of the amount of advertising revenue they're generating. Uh, they're anticipating to generate just under $5 billion worth of ad revenue this year, and that yep. takes them third. Uh, that will have almost doubled their market share, to wait for it, to nearly 4.5%. Yep. Massive. Uh, obviously, that is kind of dwarfed by the big two that still account for a massive 58% of market share in terms of ad revenue. Yeah, I mean, the run, rate, the run rate is increasing, isn't it? I mean, that's the thing. And we've talked about it a lot. And we'll link up here somewhere uh, to a couple of the episodes we've done where we've been predicting the, exactly this growth. Um, yeah. And I think we did, our, our wild prediction was that Amazon's ad revenue would overtake Facebook in 2020. They're at 5 billion, Facebook just uh, above 20 billion. Yeah. Big delta there, but it's it's shrinking. And Amazon yeah. will be stealing ad dollars from Facebook, so it's going to rapidly, rapidly shrink that gap. Okay, so uh, bad week for? Uh, bad week for, I don't know why, I don't know if this is a particularly bad week, but just kind of interesting. Um, it's a bad week for agency names, maybe. Um, uh, you know, another, well, the, the, one of the first big moves, if you like, of Mark Reed's tenure as CEO mm -hmm. of WPP. Um, as, as loyal viewers of MediaStack will know, um, our WPP 2.0 playbook advised uh, uh, the successor of Martin Sorrell, now Mark Reed, uh, to start smashing some of his agency brands together, and he's obviously mm -hmm. taken our advice. Um, so as of today, uh, VML, big agency network, and YNR, very big, very famous old agency network, are being combined mm -hmm. uh, with a very snazzy name, uh, wait for it, of VML YNR. If you write nice. that down, I think it looks more like a highly secure password for something rather than an agency name. Um, so, of course, they're getting a bit of ribbing about the name, but it's tough being Mark Reed. What are you going to do? You know, yeah. I mean, you come up with something, you, you, you lose agency names and come up with something like Wavemaker and everybody laughs. Or if you keep the names, uh, everybody laughs. But it's an important uh, indication, I think, of, of Mark's yeah. playbook is that he's going to follow through with his ambition to simplify for their for their advertiser clients. Um, so another big creative network is born. Yeah. Right, question of the week. Uh, as we've been saying, we think trust hopefully has kind of hit a floor. Um, so our question of the week is, will trust in media agencies go up? Yes, no, whatever. Very good. Okay, that's your media stack for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. See you next time.